What is up guys and welcome back. At long last we are finally making it back to some early game strategy videos. Today is going to be all about the Commonwealth. So we're going to be talking about Great Britain, FEC, and the Anzac and some things that they can try to do to slow down the Axis powers in the early game. First we're going to be talking about some tech and the tech that I like to get as the British. And then we'll move on to our Great Britain strategy here. Uh, mostly talking about the Atlantic here and your convoy lines, but also talking about a little bit about uh, the strategy for the Isles and maybe some landings into Germany as well as the Mediterranean. And then finally, we will move on over to the Pacific and talk about the FEC and the Anzac and some of the very limited things that they can do in the early game. All right, let's go. All right, let's talk about some British tech here. Uh, you've only got two major factories and it's not likely that you're ever gonna have a third, uh, depending on what you do. Uh, so we're just gonna go with uh, two starting techs here and then I'm gonna talk about some stuff you can do later on. It gets a little ambiguous after that, kind of similar to Japan. Um, so starting off here, obviously I think a very the best tech in the game is going to be wartime economy, especially for you because you're going to be in the war really, really early. You know, as soon as the Germans attack, boom, the UK is in the war. So wartime economy is going to be really, really good for you. And you're going to get a ton of value from that. And now next up, in my opinion, you're going to have a choice between radar and advanced and a sub warfare here. Um, I prefer radar and that is for a couple reasons. The first being that radar both helps against your convoy defense and it helps you protect your factories from strategic bombers, allowing you to scramble an unlimited amount of fighters and giving those fighters a plus one to their intercept value is gonna be really, really good to uh, protect that factory there in London from German bombers. And you get a plus two to your defense on your convoy rolls, which is gonna match what the German subs are doing. So. It's gonna bring it to 50-50 odds. And if you're defending your convoys, like I suggest in this video, um, it's gonna be even better for you. You're gonna be doing better than the Germans. So I'm gonna put this here for radar because I, I prefer that tech of the two. But then starting with our second tier here, if the Germans are going after advanced subs and they're pumping out a lot of subs, um, then yeah, go for advanced and sub warfare as well. Advanced subs are awesome for the Germans, and so if they can use them well, you're going to need advanced anti-sub warfare. Um, so I think that's kind of a, a must if, he's, if your German player is going for advanced subs. Otherwise, I don't think you really need it. I think radar is going to be enough for you. Otherwise, uh, if you're going to go for landings, then advanced artillery and advanced mechs are going to be really great for you. I think that advanced mechs are... One of the best units in the game, and I always recommend them in any situation. Um, so you can choose those if you want. Heavy armor, jet fighters, and heavy bombers are going to be a little bit too expensive for the British to handle, I think. I don't often see them researching these three techs. Long-range aircraft is an awesome tech for the British. Uh, it really helps you get over the English Channel and uh, do some attacks into Germany as well as it allows you to reach those factories in Germany itself and start to counter bomb them if you so choose. You don't need advanced subs. The two subs that you start with are gonna be plenty for all the combo rating you're ever gonna do, which isn't much. So don't need advanced subs. Improved factories. Uh, your factory in London is probably gonna be enough for you. You don't have a ton of money, so you're probably not gonna be making more than five units a turn, I don't think. If you see yourself uh, going towards that, you can always drop a minor factory uh, in London or another medium or something. I don't see you really utilizing the full value of improved factories, so I think your tech could be better used elsewhere. Improved construction is always a good tech. It's one of my favorites in the game. And it's really good for if you're gonna make a landing into mainland Europe, and then you can just quickly drop a fortification on your next turn to help protect you from a second round of counterattacks that the Germans might be uh, planning against you. 
So improved construction can be good if you're making landings, if you wanna go that route. And finally, of course, attack transports are gonna be very, very good for the British because they may be landing into Europe at some point and the Germans may or may not have fortified that Atlantic wall. So you may or may not need your attack transports. So really the second tier is just gonna depend on the flow of the game. It's gonna be a judgment call, but these are some of my favorite techs to choose as the British. Okay, let's move on to some early game strategy. Okay, starting with the British here in the early game, obviously you're not going to have a ton of money and you're just waiting on the Germans to make their move, but you've got some glaring issues that you need to take care of uh, early on as the British. Um, those being, you don't have an air force, so you need to start rebuilding that air force. Uh, second, you've got a ton of convoy lines all over the Atlantic and the Med that you need to start getting prepared to protect because the Germans will probably try to go after them. So rebuild your air force, protect your convoy lines, and then I think this one goes without saying you need to make sure that Paris is protected. Uh, that isn't as big of an issue because the Germans are going to have a really, really hard time getting into London, usually. <laughs> And if they do drop a bunch of transports, you'll see that coming and you'll be able to uh, hopefully react in time. But you want to start building that base in London. So if he does drop like four transports, <laughs> then you have enough capacity to respond to that. Okay, so first off, let's talk about how we're going to defend your convoy lines. Uh, one thing that I've noticed with newer players in general is that escort duty should be utilized a lot more than it is. It's a very, very simple, easy way to protect your convoy lines, and it's very effective, I think. It's very effective. So in case you've forgotten the way that escort duty works, every ship that you have on escort duty on a given in a given sea zone is gonna add plus one to your convoy defense roll on that D6 which is in and of itself good. And once you get to radar, that's gonna be plus three if you have just one ship on escort duty. So just there, you're already gonna have the advantage on that uh, convoy rating roll. And also, every ship in that sea zone that is on escort duty is gonna get to shoot at the subs that are rating. Um, so if you're having trouble taking out subs and just throw some ships on escort duty, and if the German player decides to raid that sea zone, then you're gonna get a ship with, if you're using a battle cruiser, that's a shot at a seven. So you're gonna hit that, you know, just about half of the time. And that's, those are great odds. And you'll start to whittle those German uh, subs down and you'll have two or three light carriers to hunt those subs down. Obviously you start with one in the med and you start with one on your build queue here. Um, so just in my first turn, I like to finish off that light cruiser and that light carrier with my first round of purchases, just because you've still got a lot of time before the Germans do anything and you don't have much money. So that's just an easy way uh, to get through that first turn, get those ships finished. And then on your second turn, I like to buy a fighter for that light carrier, or you can do it the other way around. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then you want to start kind of spreading your ships out along these convoy lines and watching the German subs. So whatever he does with his subs, you want to kind of mirror and be in a position to react to whatever he does. So if he starts to move some subs out here, you want to plant some ships right on top of him. And then you want to plant your light carriers within three Z, Z zones of where he can get to. Um, so if he's, you know, if he plants a sub right here, then you can plant, obviously, ships on escort duty in all the adjacent sea zones, and then maybe a light carrier right here with a fighter, and then a light carrier, say, right here, so you can get to wherever he go, might go right here and right here. If he takes his subs into the med, that's actually not such a bad thing. You may lose some money on the first turn, but if you get a light carrier with a fighter, you know, even in this sea zone or in this sea zone, then his subs are trapped in there. They can't get out. Um, 
So you've got him cornered and you, you'll, you'll get him taken care of. So if you can try to funnel his subs into the net, that's not such a bad deal. So if I'm ever given a choice, I'll put my light carriers down here to protect this. That way you can get to here and down here. Um, and it just depends on where he puts his subs, but you wanna have escort duty on pretty much all of the adjacent C zones to his subs and then have your light carriers a little bit further away um, to react in case he moves to somewhere you don't have escort duty. And another thing, if he's using his subs to attack your ships, in my opinion, that's actually a good trade-off for the British player because you've got way more ships than he's going to have subs. So if he's losing subs fighting your ships, then those are subs that he's losing and he probably can't replace because his money's going to be tied up elsewhere. And those are subs that aren't raiding your economy. So if you trade a couple destroyers for you know a couple of his subs, even though up front the cost might not be the same, that's actually going to be a better trade for you in the long run. Next thing I want to talk about is some potential British offensive rating. So if you look up here in the Baltic, we can see this German line here. It's worth three. Don't forget that even though your surface ships can't come through these Danish straits here, your submarines can go through straits because they can just submerge and go through and the Danish will never know. So you're in the rules, your subs can get through this strait before the Danish are aligned to anybody and before you, your surface ships can get through. And I don't see the Germans ever having a fighter on maritime air patrol out here and they don't have any light carriers or anything. So your subs can sneak through. You're gonna have two subs as the British. So if you can drop those two subs right here in season 14, that's gonna be a massive headache for the German player. Every time I play as Germany, I worry about this move and I've never seen it played against me. And you don't have to, you can wait for the Russian player because he's gonna have at least three subs in here probably. So he can drop some subs on here as well. And that's just really, really annoying for the German player. But I like to try to do it as the British because they're gonna be in the war before the Russians and you have those two subs that you're probably not gonna be using very much. So just think about, just think about it. The German player can't stop this unless he builds a seaplane or a light carrier, which is money out of his pocket. And all the while, he'll be losing, you know, one, two, or three bucks a turn to this. And if you think over the course of the entire game, if he just ignores it and doesn't hit, take care of it, that can be 10 or 11 infantry that he's not getting uh, to put into Europe. Every unit you have on the board, try to use in a productive way, I think is one thing that is a hard thing to do as the British. You've got all these units all over the map. It's hard to use them all every turn, but really, really try to. You can make the Italians un uncomfortable up there in North Africa and in the Med. Um, you can carpet bomb the Germans. And if you get long range aircraft, you can use this medium bomber to even, you know, maybe do some bombing raids in there. Uh, you'll probably be getting fighters from the Americans depending on what they decide to do and you can use those fires to try to uh, you know whittle down the German Air Force if you want like there are a lot of things you can do to use the units you've got you start with two transports so if the Germans take more than one turn to take France you can use your two transports to put some infantry into for example Aquitaine down here which is gonna be the most common place for the Germans to make an airborne assault just to try to take it and you know, surround Paris. So if you can get like four infantry in Aquitaine, that's one less place that the French have to defend on their second turn. And that makes it that much harder for the Germans to encircle Paris. And those are units that the French can take from Aquitaine and put into Paris to defend Paris. Um, and really the whole point is to make it as hard as possible for the Germans to take Paris. You want them to spend as many units as possible and take as many losses as possible, which is just gonna compound throughout the game for the Germans. So any early losses you can inflict on them is a good thing. And I think it's absolutely worth losing four infantry for the British in Aquitaine. 
And if he takes Paris, then your British infantry are gonna have an opportunity to retreat, which I believe is perfectly acceptable if they just get back onto the transports that you're probably still gonna have sitting out there. You know, you may lose him if he manages to encircle Paris, but if he just takes Paris and the French surrender, you'll be able to keep those four infantry uh, and then take them back to London. Moving down here to Gibraltar. Um, so spoilers for the Italy video, but the Italians are always gonna have it one eye on Gibraltar looking for you to leave it undefended. So make sure that you get at least a couple dudes down there. You know, you've got this fortification. So every extra body you can put in Gibraltar makes it so much harder for the Italians to take because of that plus two on the first round. So just keep an eye on what the Italians are doing if they're building a bunch of transports. You know, just keep on loading up a little bit at a time in the Gibraltar and it's gonna be so hard for them to take. But just remember that they're always gonna to wanna to take Gibraltar because that's a big deal for the Italians. Over here in North Africa, uh, there are a couple things to think about in the early game. You know, you don't have to be too worried about it. I don't see the Italians making some bold move, but you know, if you leave it under defended, they might do just that and try to make a move into Eastern Egypt. That's a ton of bonus income for them and it's taking bonus income away from the British. So the Italians will be keeping an eye on Eastern Egypt um, in this case, I'm a big fan of just spamming the militia button. You just drop, you know, a militia every turn. It's two bucks, and they'll just add up over time and make it progressively more and more difficult for the Italians to do anything at all in the med. Um, so sometimes it's just that easy to shut the Italians down. Uh, just, you know, a militia turn. And that's really all you need. One last thing for Great Britain before we head over to the Pacific is don't forget that Aiden is both a victory point for you and some wartime bonus income, uh, I think for the FEC. So drop a militia or two in here just to try to, you know, deter the Italians from trying anything funky. Leaving it completely undefended, I don't think is a great idea because they can just walk in, but you know, it doesn't take much because it's so kind of out of the way. So just keep an eye on Aiden. Don't forget that it is both a victory point and wartime bonus income and it, it'll probably di be difficult to get back if you lose it. All right, moving on over to the FEC. Their Navy is probably gonna be gone. I like to take it over to the Atlantic, but if you leave it there, that's fine too. Um, you're just kind of uh, making the Japanese think about you is kind of the point of leaving your Navy over here. Just make them know that you have the power to maybe counterattack them if they leave some units undefended. But just know that if you do that, they'll probably come back and wipe out your Navy. The benefit of taking it away just, I think, outweighs any of the positives of leaving it over here. The Japanese are probably gonna ignore you no matter what you do with this Navy. This battleship can be used for the med victory objective. You can use this light carrier to hunt subs. You can use the cruiser and the destroyer on escort duty. You can use the, the transports for maybe a land, an early landing into Europe because that'll give you four transports over there in the Atlantic. And if the Germans aren't expecting you, you can surprise them with that. Um, so I just think that this Navy is much better used in the Atlantic. And once we get past the early game, so you know, beyond 1939, 1940s-ish, then you can bring some British Navy back over here to the Pacific to join up with Whatever the Anzac's doing, you know, you can take the Anzac Navy over to the Atlantic too. They've got a destroyer and a light cruiser and another transport. So there's just more ammunition for you in the Atlantic that's not gonna be doing much over here in the Pacific in the early game. You know, the, the Japanese probably aren't gonna be declaring war on the British anytime soon because it's such a hefty penalty in terms of American bonus income. Um, so you don't, your Navy just isn't going to be doing much. And I, I really want to emphasize that you should be using, that the early game is super important for the British. So being able to use this Navy in a productive way is going to be benefit you so much in the late game. Now in terms of what FEC can do, I actually like to leave some transports behind just to maybe catch the Japanese getting greedy. You know, if they pick off a transport, then great. You just gave the, the Americans 
5d12 towards peacetime income so you know and it helps you move your troops around uh, because I'm a big fan of putting as much as possible into Hong Kong and don't let them walk into British Malaya and don't let them walk into Sarawak really FEC's job over here in the Atlantic is just use Japanese resources you know you don't have to win if they invade Hong Kong but you don't want to leave it vacant because that means they don't have to use hardly any resources taking Hong Kong. They can just walk an infantry in there and it's over. They get two bucks per turn. And that's not really what we want. You know, if you just have two infantry and two militia in there, think about how much planning the Japanese have to do to take out two infantry and two militia. Like, they'll be able to kill you, but it's going to tie up a lot of their resources. And those are resources that they aren't using in other places now. So it may seem like it's not worth it to try to hang on to these territories out here like Hong Kong and Sarawak and British Malaya, but just having a little bit of troops there can really slow the Japanese down. You know, if you've got four units in Hong Kong, that means they have to bring at least five ground troops into Hong Kong. At least five, you know, probably more. And those are five troops that they probably desperately need somewhere in China or somewhere down here in the Dutch East Indies. So even though you may not win those fights, just having troops there means the Japanese have to put resources into taking those places. And that is very, uh, that is a very, very valuable thing about what the FEC brings to the table. So in the early game here with your limited income, just start kind of building up around the board Make sure the Calcutta is defended, because if you do take this navy away, I don't think it'd make much of a difference even if it was here. But be aware of Calcutta and the danger that Calcutta is in at any given time. You want to be putting something in Calcutta just about every turn, um, just so that the Japanese don't get a hold of it, because that can be, that's a pretty crushing blow. You can still get Lin Lee's in the Maharashtra, but he, if the Japanese player takes Maharashtra and Calcutta, then that basically ends what the FEC can realistically do in the Pacific. So be, be aware of that. Try not to let Calcutta fall. And then also build up a little bit here in, in your outer colonies. Same for Anzac. Don't let Sydney die because that's a victory point for the Japanese. So be aware of where the Japanese player is at in relation to Sydney at any given time and uh, put some I like to put some troops into New Guinea up here just for the same reason if the Japanese player decides to try to take it that's resources that he has to put into taking that island um, that he isn't using elsewhere that may be a little bit more valuable for him so keep that in mind and also you may be able to pick off Dutch New Guinea if he doesn't end up defending it very well uh, so that's basically the amount of what Anzac is going to be doing. I like to put, you know, a militia to a militia or two in New Britain because this major port here, as the Japanese player, I like to have this major port here because it's in a good location, and that plus one to your ships from that C zone 126 is a really good thing. So you know, just a militia or two in New Britain may be enough to get them to not take that. And even if they do, again, that's resources that they're putting into taking an island, which is delaying them elsewhere on the map, which is giving the American player just that much more of a boost to come in and hopefully beat the Japanese here. So make it difficult on the Japanese. You don't have to win every fight, but make them put resources in to taking the territory that you start the game with. All right, guys, that's all I got for this week. I'll see you guys next week for the France video. All right, love you.